Absolutely. There are lots of ancient uh, claims about a special family that was isolated in a boat that saved animals for a future generation during a great flood. We've got great flood stories all over the planet, and really interesting, separated by continents. And there are some that, you could argue, predate the writing of the Old Testament. But remember, what, what, what Moses is writing about when he chronicles Genesis, right? He's writing about um, events that occurred in the ancient past. Moses wasn't there, for example, during Genesis 1 to see God create everything. He's writing about, the, about an event that precedes him by lots and lots of years. And as a matter of fact, all those events in Genesis precede him by lots and lots of years. So to say, well, okay, I've got a, a Babylonian flood event, a flood narrative mm -hmm. that dates uh, 500 to 1,000 years prior to the uh, Old Testament book of Genesis makes no sense because both of these narratives are reporting something that occurred before both of them. So what you have is just the Babylonian event being recorded, the Babylonian record, and the uh, and Moses' record, and I don't care where you put them, both of them are recording something that happened way before. Now what's interesting about that is, is that that actually adds more validity. Because here you have a hostile culture recording something identical, not identical, but pretty close, mm -hmm. to what Moses records. They both seem to be capturing some truth about an event that preceded both of these cultures. The day of Noah preceded the Babylonians. The day of Noah preceded Moses. Both are writing in their own time about a real event that occurred in history. And we have two different accounts. It doesn't matter to me which one comes first. What matters to me is, did that first account occur? That's so when I see that we have two accounts, or three accounts, or ten accounts, and if you look at the different global uh, flood accounts, we have a ton, uh, they're all pointing to something that precedes all of those uh, accounts, something that really happened in the ancient past. And so that really never gave me uh, any fits as a cold case detective trying to figure out, because I also was right away uh, investigating all the claims of the Old Testament. I discovered some of these ancient accounts, but the, remember, both accounts are recording an event that occurred long before either of them. And the point is that, that the event actually occurred, which by most people reporting on it, proves that it did. Right, so what you can either argue is that Moses somehow borrows from the Babylonian account. That's kind of what the history teachers are probably mm -hmm. going to try to assess. But remember, I uh, will work court cases where I'll find a witness uh, who was, uh, was recorded in 1980 about an event that happened in 1979. And then many years go by, and now it's 2016, and I do some digging, and I find somebody who says, you know, I was there too. I saw it too. Well, did you tell anybody? Well, nobody asked. Okay, so now I've got a record, an eyewitness record from 2016. Oh Am I going to argue? Well, no, no, you're just borrowing from that 1980 record. No, I'm, I'm not. I don't even know that guy. I just know of the event because I saw the event that happened prior to both of us. So now here you have the same kind of a thing. An event that occurs first in 1979, a record from 1980, and a record from 2016. 2016 record is not borrowing from the 1980 record. They're both recording their independent recollections of about what occurred prior. And so we have to decide between those two uh, what's true. Mm -hmm. Does it mean that either one is 100% true and my 1980 uh, guy might be slightly off on certain events or not have seen everything and my 2016 person might be slightly off. I've got to kind of reconcile those two records to see what do I think really happened in 1979.